Thanks for having me, guys. Um, missed coming last year. Uh, it's always one of my favorite days to come down and eat and, and get to spend time with you guys and gals and a lot of faces I know, and some of you I know from just the Qantas Club, so I've enjoyed getting to know everybody. Uh, yeah, Jack, I appreciate you inviting me. Um, it's, uh, it's, this is my 12th year. Now, we skipped two years ago, so the 19th season was canceled after one week for the pandemic. Actually, sorry, the 20. And uh, we came back last year and played in 21 and looking forward to a, uh, you know, hopefully getting everything back to normal uh, as, as numbers. Obviously, it kind of trends up a little bit this time of year, but I think we'll be okay. Um, I, you know, I always like to tell something funny. My dad's really good at stuff like this. Graham Clark's really good at stuff like this. You know, it's just natural to them. And uh, I, I'm like, man, I'm out of some of this stuff. I've told it, and I don't want to repeat it. And I started kind of getting in my phone there looking, and I started typing in some baseball jokes. And, you know, I always think of Jack first because he invites me, so I put, you know, baseball jokes for old men is what I've typed in my phone. Uh, but, uh... Anyway, do what? Um, just uh, going back to Dobbins Bennett Baseball, I told Jack, I said, we want to continue the legacy. It's not just a program that started 15, 20, 30 years ago. In fact, this is our 100th year of Dobbins Bennett Baseball. So we are the winningest program in the country. Um, you know, a lot of that's got to do with how long we've had the program compared to other schools, but it's also got to do with the foundation that was set and established through the coaches and all the good players and their work. And I saw it growing up. I'm fortunate enough to have played there and went on to East Tennessee State and played baseball. Came back to Kingsport City and was fortunate enough to get hired right out of college. And I was an assistant coach for about 10 years with Coach Ritz, who coached me. And uh, so, again, this is my 12th year coming up. And uh, we've had a lot of good teams, a lot of success. But when you look back at it, I think that coaches do play a big role. Uh, but, you know, a lot of that's got to do with having good kids. I've coached some of the men and women's kids in here and uh, it's been a blessing to do that. It's, it's always rewarding to look back and see where those kids are and, and ask the parents how they're doing and try to keep in touch with them. Uh, I also had Mr. Heron, speaking of the Herons, I was in the band at Robison, and Charlie Heron would tell you right now that I wasn't very good. But it was either that or chorus or orchestra, and I chose the drums. So I can still play Bridgman, tell him that. And he'll know, you may know what it is, but he definitely will. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, just keep the, you know, everybody needs to be in our prayers, but keep the school system. I mean, guys, there's people from central office up at Dobbins Bennett this week substituting. And uh, just a lot of sickness going around. So, uh, but uh, 100 years. We got a uh, winning percentage of 72% along the way, 1,625 wins. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of good coaches that started this thing, and I've got a good coaching staff right now. I let them go to work every day. Uh, I mean, obviously, the buck stops with me when it comes down to what kids are supposed to be doing and winning and things like that. But when we get coaches involved, I want them to coach, you know what I mean? I want them to be a big part of it, and they are. I was telling Jack, and uh, I can't remember who else I was telling. We got two coaches that are still with us that coached me 27 years ago. So Rodney Burton, a lot of you know who that is. Uh, he coached me, I graduated in 1994. I think this is his 34th or fifth year, David Earls who teaches at Severe, coach football there for many years, still coaches. He is retiring at the end of the year uh, from teaching. He probably will coach a few more years. But that's pretty amazing, uh, just how much they care. You know, uh, Coach Burton's retired. He's been retired from teaching for about four years. 
and uh, but they still want to coach, and it means something to them to be a part of it. And then I'm just going to name them real quick, quick. Rodney Burton's son is Bo Burton. He's my pitching coach. So he played at Dobbins Bennett. He was an All-State quarterback. Could have easily been in baseball, All-State. And he went on to East Tennessee State, had a great career there, and he's back here. He works with our pitchers. Uh, Nick Lowry, former Dobbins Bennett player, played at Milligan. Chris Cook, big name that you probably some of you have heard of if you keep up with DB Sports. Dobbins Bennett quarterback, baseball player. He is the all-time hits leader at East Tennessee State. Graduated about three years ago. Fortunate enough to get him on board, and he does. They all do. It phenomenal job and then Jeb Lambert is our last one. The good thing I like, they're all Dobbins Bennett graduates. Uh, I think it's good for them to go out and venture out and play college ball, learn some new things, bring in some new type blood, things that we might need to you know put in our program and uh, but they know the foundation, they know what it means to our kids to play for Dobbins Bennett and I think that's important. Um, Let's talk a little bit, just a minute, about the history again. So we have a preseason banquet. I've, I've mentioned this before, but I like to reiterate it, especially with this being our 100th year. We usually have a banquet. Hopefully we can have that in March. But we have guys that come to this banquet from the 50s teams, the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and obviously the last 20 years with our current players. Um, I would like to get a few more kids to come that played in the 90s and early 2000s. It's just a lot of them are working still and moved away and that type of thing. But it's amazing to me that we got guys from the 57 state championship team that come to that. You know, we won state championship in 52 and 57. Um, Lynn Johnson comes every year. He was on the 57 state championship team. John, is there anybody else you can think of that might come to that from the 57 team? I know you're not that old, I, but you got a good memory. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's pretty neat to see. And a lot of the guys that played for Coach Whited, uh, Coach Whited was played at Dobbins Bennett, coached at Dobbins Bennett, went to East Tennessee State to be their coach, and ended up at, at University of Tennessee as their coach. And uh, a lot of the guys that played for him at Dobbins Bennett, just story after story of Dobbins Bennett, what it meant to him, the foundation was laid, the rules that were set in place. I can tell you this, the haircut that some of my guys have would not have been allowed for Johnny White, I guarantee you. Uh, I like to tell some of them to cut theirs right now, but I haven't yet. Uh, 36 conference titles, 23 regional titles, 16 state appearances, two state titles. So uh, kind of want to touch on that a little bit today with it being, like I said, 100th year. Um, looking at this year's team, uh, last year we only had one senior. In all my years, four or five is the least amount I've ever had, but it just kind of fell that way. Some of the kids were probably a little better in other sports, wanted to work at them a little bit more and end up giving up baseball. But this year we have nine seniors. And we got a good nucleus of juniors and some sophomores that will contribute as well. Um, got one kid that's going to uh, Belmont. He's started since he was a freshman. His name's Jake Timms. He's shortstop. He's our number one pitcher. Very good. 4.3 student, high ACT score. Probably could go play. He may could go play somewhere else if he waited. But COVID is kind of guys keep up with college sports kind of backed up some things because they've given these people extra years, some of them more than one, and then you got all the transfers now that can transfer anywhere they want. So he, you know, he was being recruited by East Tennessee State, and, and uh, I've even had some bigger schools call. He went to Belmont. He was, he'd be on, Tennessee Tech did an in-home visit one night on a Thursday night. He goes to Belmont that weekend. Text me on the way home, said, Coach, I'm not committing yet, but I'm probably going to Belmont. You know, through all the baseball and academic money he got, Belmont's not a, you know, it's a pretty expensive school, but they made it work. And, uh, and he fell in love with that place when he went down there and he didn't, want, he didn't even want to visit other places. So, but, you know, another 
I'll just call out my seniors. You may recognize some of the names. Isaac Kale, Peyton Grimm, Aiden Arnett, Braden Yates, Jake Timms, Xander Harris, Jack Browder, Sam Ritz, and Carson Simpson. Sam Ritz, his grandfather, was former coach at Dobbins Bennett. 26 years that I, you know, that retired and I took his place. So uh, a lot of good faces, a lot of good leadership. Um, you know, you got to have leadership, guys, and I try to instill it. But you know, a lot of it starts with good people like you all that have good kids that learn those things, those foundation uh, things at home to be a leader. And I know some people say leaders are born, and I agree in many ways. But there's ways to lead that uh, you know each kid I think can contribute in those in those factors. Um, we're heading down to Murfreesboro and Knoxville. Those are the two trips we're taking this year. Uh, the band was supposed to go to Ireland. The spring break was set back two weeks, so middle of March, which is early. That's the first week of our season. And we don't normally try to travel, which we haven't the last couple years. But we're traveling to Murfreesboro and play five games in three days that first week. So it's going to be a very difficult challenge. Our basketball team is having a lot of success right now, which is great. I hope they win the state's championship. Uh, two of, you know, we got two players in basketball, one other one that's a JV player. We may be without those guys going in there and playing five games. They're all pitchers. So we're going to have to navigate through that first week and play really good teams. Uh, and, you know, the last, time we prob the last time we made the state tournament, we finished third. We were this close. I didn't realize it. I knew, but I didn't realize it until I started thinking about it. Uh, 2017, we started 0 and 4. We went to Murfreesboro, first four games, lost several close games. Come back, won a game or two. Went to Charleston, went down there and went one and three. We were four and seven because of the competition we were playing, trying to get ready for when we needed to be, you know, our be at our best. And we came back and ended up 32 and 12, and was this close to playing for the state title. Got beat five to three by Brentwood. So uh, those games just get us ready, you know what I mean? So, you know, baseball's a game of adversity anyway. Hall of Famers, bat 300. That means they get out seven out of 10 times. You gotta be able to handle those things and it's not easy for kids. It wasn't for me, I got frustrated, but it's just uh, part of the game. Um, other than that, I'm going to let y'all ask some questions. I know you'll always like to do that. I've got two, I got two hats right here. And if you want a hat, when I get them in, I've got, I ordered, with it being the 100th year, I got a set for my players and coaches, and then I got an extra set of 48 that have the, our 100th year logo on the back of them. Uh, you let me know, and I'll, we'll figure out a way to get you a hat. But today I've got two trivia questions. And there's going to be some people in here that's got the edge. They got an edge. Uh, just raise your hand, okay? All right, first question. Both of them got to do with Dobbins Bennett baseball. How many, you got your hand up? How, yeah, how many wins are we going to have this year? All right, too long. You took too long. You stutter. <laughs> no. All right, first coach, baseball coach in Dobbins Bennett history. Sprinkle. Who said it? Who's the other one that said it? All right, John, you win a hat, I'll get you one. You already said we'd do it that way. Here's you a hat. Get it in a minute. Uh, by the way, there's been 10 coaches, okay? I'm not a huge social media person, but we really have an awesome Instagram page, if you can figure out that. Bo Burton navigates it, puts a lot of stuff that we're not really, it's not bragging at all, because that's one thing I don't like about it. But I do think it's important to people to see he does the 12 days of Christmas the last two years. And he'll put from the 12th day down to the 25th things that have to do with each number. So this year, the 10th day of Christmas was, there's been 10 coaches in Dobbins Bennett baseball history. And if you scroll through, you can see a picture of every one of them. It's pretty cool. Next question, this one's a little more of a challenge, but you never know, you might get it. If not, I got one more I think somebody can get. Graduated. I want to say 88, went on to having a career at Georgia Tech, 
and was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. He has four doubles in one game, which is all-time record. Anybody got an idea? Yep. You got it. That's pretty good. Nice job. Kenny Bonifay. So good job on those. All right, if there's anything you want me to discuss or just any questions, raise your hand and I'll be glad to try to take a shot at it. Yes, sir. Think your pitching will be better this year? Uh, last year we had, I thought we had two guys established. One of them was a senior. He's at Cleveland State now pitching, Gage Hensley. He played football and baseball. Uh, the kid that I mentioned, Jake Tams, shortstop, he's back. So he's he's been pitching. His freshman year, we played Tennessee High in the last game of the season for the conference title. We win, we're the number one seed. We lose, we drop all the way to three. Jake hit a grand slam at Tennessee High in the sixth inning to put us up seven to five and then came in and pitched the seventh inning as a freshman. So he's got a lot of uh, you know, experience. He's back. I've got uh, a lot of young kids, but we have some older kids too that are ready to go. We need somebody to kind of step up and be our second and third pitcher. They're kind of just a bunch of them right together. But Jake's definitely our number one pitcher. But you got to have it. you got to have it. Pitching rules these days, I've talked about this a couple years ago, you can't go down here at the state tournament and throw somebody on Tuesday 115 pitches. They're done if you do that. Now, that may be the chance you take to win that first game. But we have rules now. If you go over 100 pitches, you have to sit three days. You go over 119, you're done because the tournament's four days and you have to see it four days. So we gotta, you, you gotta manage that pitching a little bit more. Okay, good deal. Yep, so there's some history there with the Boniface. That's why I thought somebody in here might get that. What teams are showing up down in Murfreesboro? Well, there's a team from Johnson City that did last year. but <laughs> Now, they're, we were the last team to beat them last year. They reeled off 14 straight wins after we beat them here in the stadium two weeks before the season was over. And uh, A lot of the same teams, you'll get a few different ones, but Knox Farragut is always there. Uh, the Germantown Houston's out of the Memphis area, the Collierville's, the Bartlett's, and then you go to Murfreesboro, there's usually one of those teams, uh, say a Blackman or Riverdale. Uh, a lot of growing areas, I can tell you that. You know, you think of South Nashville, that area with Ravenwood and Brentwood and all those places, I mean, it's some of the biggest growing areas probably in the country. But yes, those are the type of teams you see. Yes. Coach, when I was growing up, lots of kids played baseball, but it doesn't seem like that many play now. What, what, how do they get up to high school level? How do they get a start and proceed on up? I saw that. Somebody else said that the other day. I have not seen that. I mean, my son's seven. I got a, you know, my wife and two kids. I got a seven and six year old, and he's just they're getting into different things and trying to have fun with it. Uh, I can tell you this. I'm for. I'm glad that the dugout. If y'all have never seen the dugouts, you need to go by and see it. It's across diagonally from TNT. It's open at 3 o'clock every day. But uh, Courtney Carter owns that place right now. We were down there yesterday. She lets us use it. Her son plays for me. He's a sophomore. And there's kids coming in there left and right with their parents or coming in there for lessons. We, we need to keep these things up. We cannot let these things go. We can't let the dugout, if she decides to sell, you know what I mean? We need places for our kids to train. And I know when I was younger and you were younger, your training was probably getting out running around the backyard and riding your bike and doing all that. Me too. But times change. All these big cities have these places for kids to go and train and get faster. You know, I've got a lot of good baseball players, but they, some of them could have used some speed work, which we do as much as we can, but 
when you're in high school, it's a little different in college. I mean, they go to school for six and a half hours, seven hours. We get a couple hours with them. I mean, majority of the time, we're going to try to spend on baseball work. In the off season, we do some strength and conditioning and skill work and speed work. But a lot of that, you, you got to do on your own. It's just like anything else you want to be good at. You got to practice a little bit extra, so, you know, reading or anything. Yes, so uh, both middle schools, um, we, we are connected very much so uh, with our facilities. As lucky as we are at Dobbins Bennett to have the turf and the indoor facility, I work with them in this cold time of year when they start. I work with them left and right on getting into our facilities. and We are limited on what we can do with them as Dobbins Bennett coaches. We can't just bring them up and work with them anytime we want to. It's unbelievable, crazy, but some of it's considered recruiting, even though they're in their own system. So, but I think all the coaches connect with their middle school programs and uh, and, and do the best we can there. Christ Church, a lot of athletes seem to be going from, not a lot, but some of the better ones seem to be going from that here to there. What's the deal over there? So Christ School in Asheville, it's, we've had three two or three, um, you get an extra year. So, for example, John Fulkerson, he played at Dobbins Bennett three years. He goes to Christ School and gets two more years. Well, he's the type of kid that needs to fill out, try to grow, get stronger. That extra year, if you think you're like a big time player that can go play basketball at the University of Tennessee, is probably beneficial, even though I'd like to see those guys graduate from Dobbins Bennett High School and then move over maybe to a prep school for a year where you can do that before you go. But, you know, that's, uh, that's part of it. But that's, that's one of the, you know, the good things that when you go over there, you get that extra year to develop. That's a big deal. Going back to numbers, Pat, I don't know really if I answered your question, but I mean, I think that, you know, we're offering things we need in the city. Uh, I think, you know, we have... Uh, we're working on some things with tribe programs and all our sports. We've had baseball for seven or eight years, and now all the other sports are coming together, meeting with people in the city that's going to try to help us with facility usage and things like that. Because if we can't get out on the fields and practice, we don't, we don't have anywhere to go. It's kind of hard. And indoor facilities are great, but we don't play in no indoor facility that's 80 by 80 when it comes March getting out on the fields, doing all the things we need to do has to take place. Uh, so. Are you or the middle schools going to use the North Campus? So Severe, obviously, uh, there was some hiccups getting over there for football and basketball, but baseball is planning on using it this spring. And then hopefully next year they'll have all the things that's legally needs to be caught up so that they can play over there. That's going to be a really nice campus. It's kind of, you know, they've let it go a little bit, but it was built in, what, probably 80. But for a middle school, we put, you know, if we take care of that place, that could be really huge for facilities. Ryan? Yes, sir. Who are some of the teams that will be battling for second through ninth place? Well, one thing I didn't mention is the state of Tennessee went to four divisions in basketball and baseball and softball this year. Usually it's three. So there were six in football and three in those other sports. Triple A was as high as you go. Now there's four. So our conferences slammed down to five teams. So we used to have nine, then we went to seven, now we're down to five. This is a two year deal. We'll see how it goes and then they'll reevaluate it and see if they're going to stick with it. But us, Science Hill, Westridge, the new school, and Boone and Crockett are our conference. And I'll be honest with you, a parent was sent me a message today. Um, you know, Westridge is a new baseball coach who I'm good friends with. That's his dad, Dave Hoover, was a head coach at Dobbins Bend at one time. His grandson, Dave Hoover's grandson, just committed to East Tennessee State. That's a brand new school. All the other teams have at least one pitcher going to probably play Division One baseball. It's tough. It's gotten tougher. You know, I get people, we've not had 32 wins in those last two years, seasons we've played. What happened to y'all? What happened? Y'all gonna be better next year? 
Well, the one year I told you in 2019 that Jake Timms was a freshman, we won the conference. We won two games in the district, but we just lost two games by one run against really good teams that are, it's just, you know, we just got to keep fighting. But everybody else is striving to get better too. So it's going to be a tough conference. I like what we got. I like our team. So Science Hill obviously had a good year last year. Got a lot of kids back that are good players. They lost some key players. I think we're very even. If we can do, if we can get established on the mound like you asked earlier, if we can get that two, three, and four pitcher where we want them, I think that we're, you know, pretty even really to be honest with you. Good athletes on both teams. So there's no, well, they obviously with everything that's going on these days, you have to, there's non-faculty coaches that coach in high school anyway. So Chris Cook, who coaches with me now, he doesn't, he's never had been in education. He's, he, he y'all may know, remember Tom Hatley that owned the inspection company. He bought Tom's practice or inspection company. So he's, that's what he does. He owns the company. But he, you know, they have to go through all the background checks, do everything they need to do, and have to take some uh, coaching tests that have to do with uh, health concerns, concussions, heart, anything. They have to do all those things we do, but they're not in the classroom teaching. How many people in here played baseball at Dobbins Bennett High School? Stand up. If you played baseball at Dobbins Bennett High School, stand up. All right. Yeah, y'all are about the same age, aren't you? Not far off. You graduated when? Seventy-nine and Jeff, seventy-three. They're part of those sixteen hundred and twenty-five wins. Guys, I really appreciate you being here and having me, and it's a blessing to come down here every year and share. You know what, what the season's outlook looks like, and anything I can share with you from Dobbs Bennett history. If you want to ask any questions, I can hang around for a little bit. Anybody else got anything?